Like when I was pronounced dead on arrival, like throw him in the body bag, he's dead. Like the doctor said, no, like, you know, I'm gonna try to help him. This man doesn't know who I am. He could have said, yeah, he's dead, all right, I'm going back home. He said, no, like I feel something, I, I'm gonna try. Did the heart surgery, gave me 24 hours to, you know, see if I was still breathing on the ventilator. After 24 hours, I was still alive. They fixed my arm and my head, and I woke up three days later. I remember, like, waking up, and it was still all white, like, white everywhere, and I'm like, hey, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm 17, I'm dead. And then it starts to, like, come in, and it's like I see curtains, like a, like a freaking oxygen tank, and I'm like, like start, and then out of nowhere, bam, perfect vision again, I'm in a hospital. And I'm, then I'm like tied down to the bed because I got the breathing tube in me. I got this thing pumping air into my lungs, so I start freaking out. But there was a nurse there the whole time though. I didn't even notice her because I was all tied down and I just hear screaming like, he's awake, he's awake. And I see her like running out of the room and then like running back like three more nurses and the doctor, just this woman just coming around the corner flying, like throws her clipboard in the air runs up to me, oh my God, you look beautiful. Like, and in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? I look beautiful, I can't even, what's, what's going on? Like, am I tied down? And then she's like, all right, one, two, and like on two, she pulled that thing out of my throat, man. I got like, I got to breathe again, like real air, like, ah! and, you know, of course I coughed up a ball of tar and BBs, but everyone was just looking at me like, you're, you're alive. Like, you're, you're breathing on your own right now. Like, what's your name? I don't know. What year is it? What? Who's the president? Huh? Is there any way we could contact anyone you know with a phone number? I was like, two seven. Out of anything, my name, anything, the year, only thing I remembered after that was my father's phone number. For three days, my family didn't know. My father was outside, like, spraying out the garage and he got the phone call from the hospital saying, I think we got your son, he's been shot, but he's alive. So, I don't know how my parents had it. I don't know how that feels, like you're a father. Like, so, I don't know, it chokes me up because like, it's crazy, but they came down there and I remember like I see my mom come in and my dad and I'm looking at him, I was like, mom, you can't get mad at me right now. She's like, mad, you're alive, you're alive. After like the fourth day, they were like, all right, get up, you know, start walking, like, let's go. I'm like, let's go where? He's like, you're going home tomorrow. I'm like, it's been five days. He's like, dude, you're going home. What do you want to live in a hospital? You want to go live your life again? I'm like, sir, I got a hole in my chest the size of a teacup. He's like, listen, Ross, I'll give you a tip of advice. You live through this, you're going to be okay. Just go home, live your life. Don't hang out with these kids anymore. And after five days, they sent me home. So like, I, I'm shy, you know? My parents are asking me questions. My dad's asking me, what are we gonna do about it? And I'm like telling him, like, Dad, I know who did it, you know? The next day, like, out of a movie, like, these men in suits came in. And my dad's like, yeah, can I help you? And they pull out their, you know, badges and FBI, you know? They say the kid's name. And I'm like, yeah, I know him, that's who shot me. He's like, oh, could you identify him through a picture? I was like, of course. Pull out a picture of the kid. I said, that's him right there. He said, Ross, we have him in custody. I said, how? I just woke up like two days ago. I just learned how my name again, like how to talk. He's like, the day Blank shot you, he called Blank and told him. So this kid shoots me and calls his buddy and says, hey, I shot Ross, he's dead. The kid's like, no, you didn't, you're lying. Because imagine another 15-year-old kid saying to a 15-year-old kid, you know? So after they hang up, the kid he told calls the police on him. And he was met by the SWAT team right at his front yard. He got him. And like all I had to do was go to court and testify against him. I went in there, man, in a wheelchair, head still stapled, no teeth, 105 pounds because of all the blood I lost, arm cast, and I sat in front of 40 of his family and him, and he couldn't look me in the eye. He had his head down the whole time, and I had to tell my story like this to everyone. That was the first one. I had to go back to final sentencing, and that's when I was healed. Like, so I, I walked back in the courtroom the second time. He comes out in a purple suit, 
top hat, cane, and sunglasses. This is the kid who shot me at court, smiling. While his family cheers him on, says, like, way to shoot Ross, called me a coward because I, I was taking the justice route. Like, I didn't lower myself to his standards and go try to kill him. I spoke and the judge, like, looked at this kid and said, you know, said his name and he said, yo, Ross, thank you. And the kid just looked at the judge like, what do you mean? He's like, because if you would have killed Ross that day, you would have got life in prison. But since Ross is a warrior and survived, you get a second chance and you just slam the gavel on him. He said, go have fun in prison for 35 years. Well, I found out that the cause of the shooting was because he had to join a gang. That was his, his, his initiation was kill a random person. He had to pick someone, so he just thought I would be the guy to pick. Yeah, that happened in 2007, in about four years. And I'm telling you, the first two were the hardest. It gets hard, like, like waking up and knowing like someone tried to like shoot you down. You got to get through that every day. Like seeing people, like, I, I get on a bus, public bus, I'm freaking out the whole time. Like I don't trust anyone on the bus. For a while, my mother had to like take care of me as like, like how you do an infant, like washing, changing, feeding. Like I'm 17 years old and I, I got my mom bathing me. I can't move, I got no hand, I can't talk. I'm all sweet. And my, you know, my dad and mom were like, Ross, like come on, like the doctors say, like give it time. And then all my friends like coming to see me, hanging out with me. I started getting more positive. One day I woke up and I just, I felt different. Like I was like, you know what, this is, this is my world. That's what I, like every time in physical therapy, like I would, try to do something, mess up, I'd be like, well, it's like a nollie backside flip. Like, you're gonna mess up and, until you try it and land it. When I'd mess up, I'd be like, nollie backside flip, and then I'd, I'd get it. Like, I'd do something with my hand and like put the thing in, and the doctor would be like, oh yeah, good job, like you did it. And I'd be like, hmm. So I like started living my life as like skateboarding. It's been working. I'm very blessed, like, like, I, I see it now, like when before I'm like, you know what, well, like I'm so unlucky, like I, got, I went through all this sh getting shot and really like I look at it now after like maturing and growing up, like it just gave me a, like a whole new leg up on life and how I can live my life and it's crazy, like it's, amazing. it's like makes me happy to be alive and it's like so grateful for everything. Like I just look at what I got, I don't look at what I don't have, I look at what I have.